Hi, welcome to a new live watercolor tutorial. Today we'll be painting a misty autumn forest. So let's get to it. I am going to set up my camera. Um, in the description below, there are links to reference photos if you would like to use one of those as we paint this uh, painting together. And if you're watching live, feel free to say hi in the comments or in the live chat. <laughs> um, okay, I'm trying to get my camera here set up for you. Um, okay, so I'm going to go over my supplies real quick with you. I am using cold press watercolor paper from Arches. My brushes here that I'll be using are Princeton Neptune brushes, so I have a size 12 round brush, size 8 round brush, 4 round brush, and a size 0 round brush. And for my paints, I will be using um, all of these here. So I, I also linked all of these in the description below. So I have um, some various yellows, oranges, uh, brown, I have burnt umber and brown, I have green and like a blue. So those are kind of some colors I have, but the specific colors I'm using is this Senlier Yellow Deep and this um, Hansa Yellow Medium from Daniel Smith. I have I Isodoline Yellow Deep from Holbein. Aussie Yellow Gold from Daniel Smith. And I'm also using some colors from the Decadent Pies pan set from Art Philosophy, which is this pan set here. So the colors I'm using in that pan set, this is called Apple. And I'm also using the Blackberry color, which is like a blue. And then I'm using the Serpentine Green from Daniel Smith. I am using Paints Gray from Daniel Smith and Burnt Umber from Daniel Smith. So these are the paints that I am using. Hi, Sarah and Liz. Hello. How are you guys this morning? Glad you're here. Um, and I'm also going to use some of these colors from KMS Watercolor. So I'm thinking about using this uh, glittery gold here and um, this blue. So this is called Little Dipper from KMS Watercolor, and this is called Constellation. And yeah, all of these supplies are linked in the description below. Okay, so let's get started. I have this, um, I have my, my paper taped onto my desk, and I have some of those reference photos up on my tablet beside me. And I think for the first thing we will do is we will do like a very light um, blue for the sky and then we will paint like start painting in the trees so let's start with the blue this the blue sky so i i think i'm going to be using my my big brush here this size 12 round brush and also uh, my paper here this is a five by seven size sheet of cold press paper and I actually need to um, clean off some of my palette here. So I am going to take some of this off. Okay. And the blue I'm using is this blackberry color from, Dean, from uh, Decadent Pies pan set. So I'm just gonna put some of this on my palette here. If you're watching live, feel free to say hi in the chat. Um, and if you are following along with me on this tutorial, I'd love to know. So yeah, I just put some on my palette here. I'm going to add a lot of water to it. I want this sky to be pretty light, at least to start out with. Um, and then I'm also going to mix a little bit of this shimmery or glittery blue from KMS Watercolor. I'm just going to mix some of this in. 
I like to put a little shimmer into my watercolor paintings. It's just, it's so much fun. Okay. And I'm gonna start at the very top of the paper here because I want the top to be the darkest and then I wanna kind of make a gradient to make it lighter as I go down. And I just dipped my brush in my water. Um, I didn't dip it back into my paint. This will help me make this uh, the, the paint in my brush lighter. So yeah, as you can see, I'm just starting out very light and I'm only going about the uh, top third of the paper here. And now I'm cleaning my brush and I'm going to load it with a little bit of water and I'm going to make this even lighter, kind of let it fade into the paper better. And then I'm going to go ahead and take more of this um, blue. Kind of, since my paper is still wet, I'm going to drop some in at the top. I want the top to be kind of like a little darker. Because as you um, probably noticed with the sky, the sky is darker um, farther away or like higher up. And this also kind of helps frame your painting a little bit. Hi, Fallon. How are you doing? I'm loving your mushroom paintings from the challenge. Um, hi, Lisette. So as we wait for this to dry, I want to go ahead and, uh, in case you didn't know, the previous live watercolor tutorial were these mushrooms here. Um, so if you would like to check out this tutorial, I linked it in the pinned comment below and also in the description. If you'd like to check that out. And there's also a art challenge going on right now called the Fall Fungi Challenge. And you can go to the hashtag Fall Fungi Challenge on Instagram if you'd like to learn more about it. Or I did link it in the description as well. Um, for you. Okay, so I I think I'm going to go ahead and start on the trees now. Um, this area over here is pretty much dry. It's just this up here is a little wet, but that's okay because we are not painting the trees up, um, up this high. So what I'm thinking is for the trees, we will paint them um, kind of starting right here, kind of like in the top third or in the middle of the paper and then kind of have them make a U shape. So they'll be lower in the middle and then higher towards the edge of our paper. Good, Fallon. She says, I'm doing well and thanks so much. You're welcome. Okay. Um, so to make this, to, to paint this forest, I am going to start light. And I'm going, I'm going to use various oranges and yellows and a little bit of green. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the plan. Um, I'm gonna use my size eight round brush first. And I'm going to start, I'm gonna pick one color to start with. I think I might start with um, a yellow. So I'm gonna start with this, what is this? It's called Hansa Yellow Medium. So I'm just grabbing some in my brush and then I'm going to put some on my palette here. This is a really cute palette that I recently got. <laughs> I'm gonna add a lot of water to it. And I think I might mix a little bit of, of orange into this because I kind of want like a gold, like a goldish yellow. That's kind of what I want to go for. I'm going to mix a good amount of water in this because I want this to be light. So we'll, we'll work with a light layer first, let that dry, and then when that layer is dry, we will then add more detail to our trees. 
Hi, Hannah. Hannah says, good morning. Watching a little bit, then have to go. I'll catch the replay. This looks familiar. A new take on one of your courses, course landscapes is going to be great. Love, love that in the course. Thanks, Hannah. Yeah. Uh, she's talking about my Discovering Watercolor course, um, which is my beginner watercolor course. Okay. So I'm just going to paint various trees this yellow. I'm not going to have all my trees be yellow because I want some to also be orange and red. Um, so I'm going to start up here and kind of make uh, triangle shapes. And it's okay to have um, some white of your paper exposed as well. And the further away, like more up here, these trees up here are going to be smaller. And then as we paint down, they are going to be bigger. And again, I want this to be very, very light. And we're, we're not worrying about um, the detail right now. We're just kind of painting them in loosely. And light. We, we, we want these trees to be light. Um, we don't want them to be like a dark yellow. And I'm going to go ahead, since those trees are wet, I'm going to go ahead and drop in a little bit of green into them. I like to do this sometimes because, as you might notice with fall, um, some trees, like not all trees are just yellow. Some have like still some green in them. So while this yellow is still a little wet, I'm just kind of dropping in some green. Okay, so these trees down here are going to be larger. And you can also have some trees kind of off of the paper that'll like, um, you, you don't want to have just all of your trees, um, like in your paper, it's gonna also have some kind of off. Again, while those trees are still wet, I'm gonna take another brush and then take some green, the serpentine green I like to use a lot, <laughs> um, and drop some in here and there. Some of my trees have already started to dry, but it's okay. And this first layer will look a little wonky. Like this is how <laughs> first layers usually look. They they don't look like amazing or, or anything. So don't get too stressed out if your trees don't look the way they want you want them to look because this is just the first layer. I'm really trying to make sure these bottom trees are big because I want to give that perception. Um, that, you know, these trees up here are farther away and these trees down here are closer. Hi, Keister Art. They say, I can't stay, have to go to bed, but good morning. Catch you on the replay. Have a lovely day. You too. I hope you have a great night. Thanks for um, stopping by and saying hi. Okay, so again, while these trees are still wet, I'm gonna drop in a little bit of green. I need to get more of that yellow. 
So I'm adding a little bit of orange into this because I want to make it kind of like a gold yellow. Hi, hi Art, Art Oscar too. Um, thank you. They say, hello Allison, this is amazing, thank you. Yeah, and I, I am making sure that there is plenty of water because I want these trees to be light. And again, we're just painting the yellow trees for now. Um, we will be adding orange trees and red trees. And to be honest, I am probably painting too many yellow trees. <laughs> Um, but it's fine. Okay, I'm gonna paint some smaller, smaller trees up here. Okay, again, while these trees are still wet, I need to, I wanna drop in some, just a little bit of, uh, green. Okay, some of them are already dry. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna paint a few more yellow ones. Hi, Joe. She says, good morning, stopping to watch some of the tutorial. Glad you're here. Okay, I'm gonna take some of that serpentine green. Drop some in. Okay, now I'm going to paint, um, paint in the orange trees. I think I'm going to go ahead and move to my size uh, 4 round brush. I feel like this is a better size. So I'm cleaning this brush because it has a little bit of green in it. And then my size 8 brush I was just using, I'll go ahead and use that to add some green to my wet trees as we paint them. Hi Sarah. She says, hi, Allison, can't paint with you today, but thought I'd look in a while. Um, I have a few spare minutes. I'm really looking forward to seeing how this one turns out. Well, I'm glad that you can stop by at least for a little while. Okay, so for my orange, I have this iso, I don't know how to say this, but it's, I think it's Isodoline Yellow Deep from Holbein. And this Aussie yellow or Aussie red gold but of course you can use whatever kind of paints you have so don't worry about using the same exact paints I'm using for this tutorial so I'm kind of just mixing in an orange that is kind of both of these and again I am trying to add a lot of water to this because I want this to be light. Okay, I'm gonna start on this side. And then I, I kinda want some of these orange trees to overlap the yellow ones a little bit. And I'm gonna, um, let's see, paint, I might paint one like up here. Maybe. And then, um, I kind of want to start blending in the bottoms of the trees, kind of blend in the bottoms into the paper. This will kind of help with that misty effect um, that I kind of want to go for, kind of make them look kind of like they're fading. Hi, Des. 
She says, hey, just popping in to wish you all an awesome weekend. I'm glad that you can pop in for a little while. I hope you have a great weekend too. So yeah, I'm going to try and have the bottoms kind of fade. <clears throat> and then I might drop in a little bit of green. Maybe not into all of them, maybe just like a few. Okay, and this is actually too much, so I'm kind of soaking that up with my brush. <laughs> and again, with this, with this, with these orange trees, we are not worrying about detail yet. We want this to be light, and actually, my trees over here are probably too dark, but it is what it is. <laughs> so make sure your orange is light. Um, when we're done adding the first layer of all of the trees, we will then go back in and add detail to them. Hi Joyce, good morning. Hi Leanna. Leanna says Oregon is on fire. Actually, most of the Pacific Northwest is. Yeah, I've I've seen that online. It's awful. Um, sh she says we've been on evacuation notice for days. Many big fires. I'm going to paint a forest fire today if I get to stay home. I'm sorry about that, Leanna. I'm sure that's like really hard to deal with right now. Um, I'm so sorry. I will definitely be praying for you and everyone who is affected by those forest fires. Okay. Um, Des says, I'm actually thinking of painting the sunflower this weekend. That's awesome. I, I'm really excited to see you paint a sunflower, Des, because I feel like you're really good at painting flowers. <laughs> like, the, the flowers you painted with your butterflies were really, really good. Yeah, if you guys don't know, I do have a sunflower tutorial. Okay, um... Yeah, so I'm just kind of adding these orange trees here and there. I need to grab some more orange. Okay. Um, how is my video? Did, is my video okay? I feel like I was, like, paused there for a second. <laughs> All the stresses of going live. Okay. And I, I need to keep in mind that I also want to add red trees, so I probably shouldn't add so many orange trees. <laughs> So yeah, as you can see, I'm kind of trying to fade the bottoms of them. Des says, thank you. I loved yours, so I hope mine will be just as beautiful. I have painted flowers maybe one or two times before the first butterfly with flowers. Jeez, you must have like a natural talent towards flowers because they were really good.
Okay, so as you paint these trees, keep in mind that these bottom ones need to be bigger than the ones over here. I am kind of not doing that very well. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try and paint this one right here big. Kind of trying to fade that bottom. Okay. Um, that says, for me, the video is fine. Okay, good. <laughs> um, that one says, yes, does. I'm jealous of your flowers. <laughs> yeah, I think we all can agree that Des's flowers are beautiful. I love the flowers does that you painted with your snake. The snake you just painted. And I think you painted them like red flowers. Am I right? I think that's the painting I'm thinking of. And it's really pretty. Okay, I might paint a red tree here. I really need to remember that, that I'm also painting in red trees. So I probably shouldn't cover all of my white areas with orange trees. And I feel like I will go back in with some yellow. On, and like kind of bring out the yellow on those yellow trees because I feel like now that they're dry, they just look kind of dull. And to make like a misty effect, we, we should kind of fade out the bottoms of these trees. Hannah says, coming in fine for me too. Okay, good. Um, Sarah says, my landscape not turning out very well. I'm sorry, Sarah. Um, sometimes it's okay to start over or like maybe have that be kind of like your practice round and then um, Learn, learn a little bit from from that practice round and then start like a, a new painting. That helps me a lot sometimes if I'm painting something that I'm unsure about. I like to just do like a practice round. And then my second painting always turns out way better. I'm kind of feeding the bottom of this tree. Okay. Now I'm going to paint in some red trees. So for my red, I'm going to be using this apple color from Decadent Pies. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put some on my palette right here. I love this apple color because it's it's like a nice natural looking red like it's not super saturated and i love it it's more of like a natural looking red um kind of like muted and i'm trying to add a good amount of water to this because like the other trees i want these red trees to be light okay i'm going to go ahead Let's see, maybe paint some, paint one here. And yeah, I <laughs> my red is not light at all. Okay, that's better. And I'm gonna try to make the bottoms fade. I am covering up some of the trees I did make and then leaving some exposed. 
Um, and again, yeah, this layer is not exactly like super pretty or anything. <laughs> We're just kind of doing like the base layer of these trees. And I'm going to try to make this tree here like super um, big to give that effect that these trees down here are closer. Okay, these trees, I want to try and make them smaller up here. Might paint a little red one right here. I'm kind of making my trees kind of like the style of a pine tree, in case you haven't noticed. <laughs> okay, I'm grabbing more of this apple color. It says the snake was with some red, purple peonies. Yeah, that, that was it. Yeah, those were really nice duds. Okay, I'm gonna let this all dry and then when this layer is dry, we will add more um, depth 
more detail, more color to this to these trees. Joy says, I'm glad you decided to do a landscape. I've been practicing landscapes lately. I love the fall colors. I wish I lived somewhere that I could see more fall colors, mostly yellow leaves here. Yeah, I I don't paint landscapes um, like that much. And so this is kind of like something different and fun to do. And, and I just thought it would be really fun to paint like a, a fall landscape like this. Okay, while we were waiting, I thought I would do something fun, something I haven't done before. Um, so I, oh, hi, hi, Volmond, Madel. Um, what, what is your name? I, I would love to know what your name is. Um, anyways, I'm gonna do something fun. So here we go. I'm going to turn my camera. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to do something fun, like, um, really quick, really quick here. Okay. As we wait for the paint to dry. So, okay. I thought I would spotlight one of you guys. So I'm going to do something fun, um, with these, Watercolor tutorials from here on out. I'm going to spotlight someone who has done a tutorial and shared a photo um, on Instagram um, of their finished painting. So here I am going to shout out. We have Elizabeth Nichols. She um, did one of my tutorials. Okay, I, I have to find it again. I lost, I lost the photo. Um, she did, she, she does my tutorials um, a lot and I always enjoy seeing her art from my tutorials. So here you go, here's one of them. Um, I just love, um, she recently did my, like the, these are all for my tutorials. So these mushrooms, the pansies and the sunflower. And I just wanna say, you're awesome. <laughs> Liz, um, you're so talented. I just want to give you a shout out. Um, I will link her Instagram in the description for you guys if you wanted to support her. Um, and if you would like to be shout shouted out in these tu live tutorials every Friday, use the hashtag. I just came out with this hashtag. I don't think anyone has, has used it, but it's Alice in Lion Art Tutorial on Instagram. Um, and I will feature someone and the next live tutorial. Okay, that was fun. <laughs> Liz says, thank you. You're welcome, Liz. Yeah, I, I agree, Lisette. Yep, and Sarah, yeah, I totally agree. She's so talented. Okay, now let's get back to the tutorial. I am going to now um, set up my camera again, so I apologize if it's, um, okay. I apologize if it's like shaky. Okay, here we go. Okay, sorry guys. Trying here. <laughs> okay, I think that's good. Um, yeah, Joyce, she, she does a beautiful job, doesn't she? Okay. So my trees are basically dry. So let's now add more detail to these trees, add more color and depth. So to do that, I'm going to move on to a smaller sized brush. So, um, okay, your, your name is Laura. Okay, thank you for letting me know, <laughs> Laura. Okay, I'm going to move to a size zero round brush um, now, I might go back to the size four round brush, but I'm first going to try and use my smaller brush. So I'm, mo I'm moving to a smaller brush because this allows me to add like more detail. Um, it's easier to add more detail when you are using a smaller brush. Aw, Liz says, I love painting with Allison. She has got me into the habit of painting every day. <laughs> That's so sweet. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoy painting with me, Liz. 
Okay, so I'm gonna start with yellow. Let's start with yellow. Um, and again, as a refresher, I'm using this Hansa Yellow Medium here. And actually, I might use this Senlier Yellow Deep. Of course, you can use whatever kind of yellow you already have. Um, this is kind of like a, like like the title says, like a deep yellow. It's not, um, it's, it's more of like a warm gold, goldy yellow. And this time, I'm not using as much water. I'm just gonna put it here on my palette. I might also just paint right, right from the pan, but I like to add a little bit to my palette with some water. You're welcome, Des. Hi, Sheila. How are you? Sheila has been doing the fall fungi challenge as well, and her mushrooms are just so good. They're so talented. Okay, I'm going to now just add more detail to these yellow trees. So I'm gonna start with this one up here. I'm gonna leave some of that lighter yellow underneath. So I, I don't wanna add, like I don't wanna paint over all of that lighter yellow. And this time I'm gonna add some little branches like this. Okay, leave some of that lighter color underneath exposed. All right, now I'm gonna move on to the next one, maybe like right here. And keep in mind that, you know, we'll also be adding more detail to the red trees and the orange trees, but I might even Paint in some green trees. Sarah says, how far has everyone got in the fungi challenge? Yeah, I'd love to know you guys. Um, those of you who are doing the challenge, how far have you got? Like, have you been keeping up with it or are you behind like me? <laughs> uh, guys, I have not been doing my own challenge. Isn't that like sad? Um, I've been doing a lot of like things for my business instead, but um, yeah, I'm behind on my own challenge. I don't think I've, I, I haven't painted the Gypsy. I haven't painted that, I, I think it's called the Rasula, Rasula. I didn't paint the oyster mushrooms. <laughs> That's awful. Um, Sheila says, all oh, things. I just started painting a few weeks ago and it has been so fun. So intimidating seeing so many great artists. Yeah, it is intimidating when you just start. Um, try, try your best not to compare yourself. That's super important when starting because it's so easy to compare yourself to others, like on social media. Um, one, one of the sayings I really like is your race, your pace. So your race is, let's say your um, artist journey. So it's your race and you will go at your own pace. Not everyone else's pace, not um, your best friend's pace, not the artist you admire on Instagram, not, not his or her pace. It's your race, so you'll go at your own pace. And I just love that. Um, Des says, gotta go for now. Have fun painting. Bye, Des. Glad you can hang out with us a little bit. So yeah, I'm just kind of adding in like brush strokes that kind of hint at like at branches and I'm leaving some of that lighter yellow underneath exposed and again I'm I'm not using as much water as I did with the first layer
Okay. Um, hi, Sydney. Good morning. How are you doing today? I like this painting because it's relaxing and it doesn't require too much detail. Like, at least for the, like, the look I'm trying to go for, um, it's just fun. It's nice to do paintings like this sometimes and not always like super detailed and like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say, but you, you understand. It's just nice. Okay, I'm almost done painting with this yellow. I think I might move on to the orange. Um, Liz says that she's working on the gypsy mushroom for the fall fungi challenge. Laura says, I worked a bit ahead, but haven't posted yet. Last one I posted was the gypsy. Okay, so for the orange, yeah, just use whatever orange you have. Again, um, I'm using this weird named orange. It's called Isodoline Yellow Deep from Holbein. I'm just going to paint right out of the tube. Not, I mean, right out of the pan. <laughs> okay. Um, so again, I'm leaving that, some of that lighter orange underneath. I'm going to try and kind of blend with water towards like on the bottom of the trees. So it kind of like blends, fades, fades out. I might have to rename this tutorial um, without the misty name <laughs> because um, I don't know if it's looking very misty or not. I that that was my intention, but I feel like um, it's not turning out that way. But I guess we'll see. So again, I'm kind of trying to feed out that orange a little bit with some water down here. If you don't know, and you're a beginner with watercolor, I do have a free beginner watercolor class. Um, I did link it below in the description, um, but just so you know, I am going to make it better. I'm going to update it a little bit, um, maybe add a bit a bit more to the free class. So if, if you did join the free class already, just know that you will get the updated class when I do update it. But anyways, yeah, I do have a free beginner watercolor class if you wanted to check that out.
Sheila says, I love fall and live in Minnesota, so there are so many gorgeous colored trees to reference. The peak colors, but the peak colors are still a few weeks away. Oh, I bet. Yeah, um, I live in Indiana. So yeah, our fall is beautiful. Um, the trees, at least where I live, don't turn until like the second week in October. So I have a few more weeks of green trees. But I am so looking forward to fall. I can't wait. So what other kind of autumn or like fall inspired painting tutorials would you like to see from me? I'd love to know. I messed up there. I'll just I'll just paint this tree like orange or something. Hi, Viviana. Hi. She says, hello, Allison. What a beautiful autumn forest. Thank you. Okay. I'm almost done with this orange. Then we'll paint in the red trees. Then I'll add some, a little bit of green trees as well. And maybe, I don't know, we'll, we'll see from there what else we need to add. Thank you, Sarah. She says, landscape is looking beautiful. Thanks. How, how is yours doing? Um, are you still having trouble? Okay, I'm going to add a bit more, I think I'm going to add this one, like some orange to this yellow tree. I don't know. I feel like, I feel like I kind of like this orange better than the yellow. <laughs> it just seems more rich. Maybe it's like the paint I'm using. I'm kind of blending out this, the bottom of this tree here with some water. So it kind of fades. 
Okay, let's move on to the red shades now. So again, for the red, I am using this apple color. This is from the Decadent Pies. <clears throat> oh, I just realized my paint kind of made, made like a cool effect up here. That looks kind of cool. <laughs> I was not planning that, but it looks kind of like, I don't know, like a little cloud or misty cloud or something. Okay, so again, I'm using my size zero round brush and I'm just gonna take some right out of the pan here. And as I paint in the bottom, I'm gonna try and make it a little lighter so that kind of fades. Again, I'm trying to make some branches. Yeah, these are evergreen trees that are like turning colors, but you know what? It's okay. It's my painting. I can have evergreen trees turn colors if I want to. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I'm having the bottoms kind of fade. Um, Sarah Reed says, I noticed that about your sky. And Sarah Lucas says, I was looking at that cloud earlier. It looks cool. <laughs> I thought it was deliberate. <laughs> nope, it's not. Um, it just happened. I think it could be because I mixed like the shimmery blue, oops, um, with this blackberry color. And maybe those two paints have like different kinds of, like are made up of different materials. And that kind of made that effect maybe. So how is the tutorial going for you? Are you having fun? If you're watching the replay, feel free to um, comment below and let me know how it's going. So what are your guys' plans this weekend? I will be visiting my sister. So that's going to be fun. So I'll be visiting her tomorrow into Sunday. And then Sunday I might do some painting. Maybe I'll try and catch up on the fungi challenge, but who knows? <laughs> I'm 
Okay, I want these trees down here to be a little bit more detailed because they are closer. So naturally they'll be a little bit more detailed. I feel like we need some music or something. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I'm allowed to play music because YouTube will, won't like that. Unless I play like copyright free music like I do in my videos, my vlogs. Lissus, your painting is gorgeous. I am working on mushroom paintings this weekend and cleaning house. I also need to organize the seeds I've been gathering out of my garden. What kind of seeds um, are you gathering, Liz? I'm curious. Do you have sunflowers, like sunflower seeds? My poor garden is neglected. <laughs> I feel like every year, but by the time September comes around, I like give up on my garden. I'm just like, eh, I don't feel like weeding. And yeah, it's bad. Okay, this tree is too big. It's supposed to be smaller because it's far away, but um, that's fine. Maybe it's just like a super big tree. <laughs>
Sheila says, I'm the same way. I let the weeds take over because in a couple months they will be covered by snow anyway. Yeah, my thoughts exactly. I do want to fade out this bottom here a little bit so that it's not white. Okay, I think I'm going to paint this one red tree here and then we'll go back in with some maybe a little bit of green trees and some more, I'll add a little bit more yellow because I feel like, I don't know, I feel like I could intensify the yellow. Um... Sheila says, I live on a 30 acre farm, so I can never get the weeds under control. Oh yeah, <laughs> I bet that would be a lot of work to do. Um, Liz says, yes, yeah, sunflowers, marigolds, nat nasturtium, I don't know what that is. Maybe some kind of flower. Um, Lettuces, mustard, radishes, tomatoes, basil, mint. Wow, that's a lot, Liz. Um, and she says they are all in bags, but not cleaned or labeled. There might be a seed, a seed shortage next year. And she says, I want to live on a 30 acres farm, but no snow. <laughs> yeah, Liz, you don't get snow, do you, in Arizona? Or, or do you have snow some sometimes? Um... And Sheila says, I, I could live without the snow too. <laughs> what? I like snow. I do. Um, but I don't like how long winters are where I live in northern Indiana. Okay, I'm going to add some green and like some green trees. So the green I'm using is Serpentine Green from Daniel Smith. If... You've been here for a while, you know how much I love this green. <laughs> I love this green so much. Okay, I'm just gonna paint right out of the pan, or yeah, half pan here. And this is like all I have. I'm gonna have to buy more soon. I don't know what I'm gonna do if I run out. Okay, I think I want to paint like, let's see, like a green tree here. Okay, and then I added a little bit of water to my brush. I'm just going to kind of fade that out. Well, it says snow, snows, but goes away quickly. Okay. That's what I thought. I've never been to Arizona. 
Um, but I, I really want to go someday. And then I'm going to fade this tree. Okay, I'm going to add, I, I forgot to add more detail to this orange tree here, so I'll do that, but um, before I, I do, I'm going to add some green tree here, I think. By the way, I did link some reference photos, but am I using them? No. <laughs> um, but I, I mostly linked them because... They're kind of like an idea I had for this painting, but I knew that I probably wouldn't like paint exactly what I see in the photos. They're more for you if you want um, to follow specifically like a photo. I'm just kind of painting whatever, whatever I want this painting to be, I guess. I'm going to add like a little green tree up here. Um, Sheila says painting snow looks challenging unless you use gouache. Yeah, I, I, I painted snow before but it was on wood slices and I used, what did I use? I, I primed the wood slices with watercolor ground and I used like a iridescent medium to make it shimmery. So basically the watercolor ground was the snow, <laughs> but I, I never painted snow like like a landscape like this with snow. I feel like that that would be hard without gouache. I agree with that. Okay, I'm trying to see where else I want to add some green. I think I may add some Maybe I'll make this tree right here green, but I might make it a little taller. So I'm going to start up here. Okay, I'm going to add, let's see, a green tree. Maybe I'll paint this right here green. Okay, I'm going to get out my yellow again. This time I'm going, I think I might use this Hansa Yellow Medium from Daniel Smith. It's just like a, a yellow. <laughs> um, I'm just going to take it right out of my pan. Fallon says, Michigan winters would be great if I didn't have to go outside or drive. Oh yeah. 
Yeah, I guess I like snow mostly because I don't like go out every day or drive somewhere every day. But I feel like if I did, I wouldn't like snow as much. Um, Sheila says, right, just hibernate like a bear would be perfect. <laughs> I totally agree. <laughs> Okay, I might have to add some of this yellow to my palette. Add some water to it. And yeah, I'm just kind of trying to see where else I need to paint trees. Um, yeah, I'm going to paint one here. There's kind of like an empty spot. But this yellow isn't, isn't very bright, so I might have to add, I don't know, something to this to make it look more like a tree. And then basically, yeah, I'm just adding this yellow also in some areas where oh, there's like a lot of white of my paper exposed. So I'm going to add a little bit down here. Although it is okay to have some white of the paper because that'll give this painting more of a misty effect that I was trying to go for but didn't quite do successfully. <laughs> I may add a little tree up here. And then up here, kind of help give this more of an angle. And then I think I'm going to grab some of this. Um, Apple color from Decadent Pies. Paint like a little tree here. So basically what I'm doing now, I'm just looking at my painting, kind of seeing where else I need to add trees. Kind of trying to see where I should add more detail. I think I might add some red here. I might add like a red tree here, kind of off of the paper, like a, the tip of a red tree. Hi, Susan. Uh, she says, hi, I got here very late. Has there been more than one forest? No, that this is the only one um, that we're that ever painting. And that's okay. Um, there will be a replay of this tutorial too. Okay, I think I might add a bit of orange to this tree here because I, 
I don't know, it looks a little lost in the forest. <laughs> kind of want to help make it look more detailed. You're welcome, Susan. And yeah, I just feel like my yellow trees I don't know. They, they're just not very detailed looking. So I'm adding a little bit of orange to them in some areas to help make them stand out more. Okay, and I think when we're done with these trees, we will add a bit more to the sky. And then we will have, um, we'll, we'll add some more detail, but with like some shimmery watercolors. At least that's what I'm going to do. If you don't have shimmery watercolors, that's totally okay. Um, I just like to do that last. Okay, um, yeah, so now, actually, I'm going to add, kind of paint over that white area a little bit. Okay. So now, um, I am going to grab my size 8 round brush and I'm going to add a bit more of a dark blue up here. So let me go ahead and move my camera a little bit so you can see better. Okay, I'm going to take my palette here, um, grab some of this black berry color from Decadent Pies one of my favorite blues ever. Um, it's a really pretty blue. This time I'm going to add a bit more to my palette and not use as much water. And I'm also going to take some of this shimmery blue here. This is called Big Dipper from KMS Watercolor. And I do have a 10% off coupon code for you um, for her shop if you wanted to check out her beautiful paints. They're so shimmery. I don't know if you can see. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to add this to the very top here. Like this. And then I'm taking water in my brush. And now I'm going to kind of fade it out with water. And I, I'm going like at a U angle. There's like a little um, red speck there. Okay. So 
So yeah, I'm just I'm just adding water, kind of helping make this gradient look smooth. And I'm gonna add a bit more up here. Okay, um, now, yeah, I'm just looking at my painting, seeing how I can make this better. There's like a little red speck of paint there. <laughs> um, Joy says, KMS shimmery paints are the best. I have ordered a few sets. Yeah, aren't they? I just love them. They're so fun to paint with. And now I have this gold here. It's called Constellation from KMS Watercolor. So I think I'm gonna add this to some of my trees. So yeah, I'm just kind of wetting this a little bit first. And I'll probably just add a little bit of this to my orange and yellow trees. Okay, um, I feel like there is more I can add, but I don't really know. Um, so I think I might be done for now. Maybe later I'll add a bit more to this painting, but I feel like it's okay. <laughs> it was fun to paint. Um, something different than my usual paintings. I will go ahead and give you a close, a close look. Actually, I think I'm gonna untape my paper, so I'm gonna do that first. So let me know um, in the comments or in the live chat what you thought of this tutorial. Did you enjoy it? I feel like I might add a bit more to it, um, maybe to kind of darken the edges. I just don't really know how I want to do that yet. Oh, that's a good idea, Liz. <gasps> that's a really good idea. Liz says, maybe some distant misty mountains in the middle. That is a good idea. That is a really good idea. Um, should I make the mountains like the same color as the sky, like a blue? Or should I um, have there be trees, like uh, fall trees on the mountains too? Or would, would that be too much? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> what do you think? Give you like a little close up. Okay, it's not focusing. Let me um, move my camera close. Okay. 
feel like it's hard for you to see the detail. Um, but okay, I'm, some of you are commenting your opinions. So let me read those. Um, Liz says, yes, just blue. Joyce says, same color as the sky. Keep the trees in the foreground. Um, Sarah says, I agree with Liz, just blue. And Joyce says, that would look really nice. Um, and then Sheila says, beautiful. Thanks, Sheila. Okay, let's go ahead and paint some distant mountains. I'm going to take a drink of my water real quick. Okay. Okay, so, um, let's see. I think... I think for the mountains, I'll have like the tops of them be a, like the same dark blue up here and then kind of have them fade into the bottom so that they kind of look hazy, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and mix that same blue I was using. So it's Blackberry from Decadent Pies. a lot <laughs> okay and then I'll go ahead and mix some of this it's called little dipper okay now I I want to kind of see where I should paint the mountains. It might take me like 10 seconds to think about this. Okay. Um, what do you guys think? Do you have any opinions? Maybe like one tall one over here and then like a, sh like a shorter one over here. Um, Sorry if you're watching this and you're like, geez, just paint the mountains already. <laughs> okay. 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 Thank you, Liz. She, she says that sounds good. <laughs> I'm kind of nervous. I hope this turns out okay. This was unplanned, so I'm just kind of like, oh. All right. Um... Take some courage, I agree. Okay, um, I'm going to load some water in my brush now. Kind of. Okay. Try and let this fade. You guys are witnessing me do something I'm kind of uncomfortable doing because <laughs> I don't really know. Um, I don't paint landscapes that often. So I'm kind of not confident painting them, but I just thought this painting would be fun to do. Okay, I'm going to do a, a shorter one now, kind of like over here, that kind of overlaps oh, okay
Then I'm going to make kind of like a jaggy horizon line because, you know, mountains aren't perfect, like a perfect triangle. goodness um <laughs> Susan says I always have to look at a reference honestly that probably would have been a good idea for me I feel like that that would have made me feel more confident I guess <laughs> um Sarah says not at all take your time okay <laughs> hi sun moon they say it's always good to work on something you're not confident in. Oh yeah, I agree with that. It, it's good to do that. Um, and then they say, what state are you from? I'm from Indiana. Joy says, I love it. Thank you, Joyce. <laughs> Liz says, wow, great job. Thank you. Um, Sarah, Sarah says, mountains look great. The painting looks more complete now. I agree with that. Yeah, I think it does. I feel like it was kind of missing something. Um, Susan says, they turn out great, though. Thank you. And yeah, Sheila, I, I agree. Sheila says, that adds the perfect touch. Thanks. Um, okay, I think I'm going to do one last thing here. I'm going to take some of this blackberry color and some of this blue and just kind of help, help this mountain kind of Stand out from the other one a little bit. Okay, cleaning my brush, adding some somewhat clean water to my brush. My my water jar is not very clean right now. <laughs> okay, I'm kind of jagged, jagged edge. Almost done. Okay. Um Sun Moon says, so cool. I'm from California, also an artist. You're a great inspiration. Thank you for sharing. Aw, thanks. That's awesome. You're from California. I have been wanting to go to California for like the longest time. I've never been. It's just, it seems like such a beautiful state. Um, I really hope to go. J Jimmy and I were going to go this year on a trip, but... Of course, you know, COVID happened, so we couldn't go. So hopefully next year we can. Okay, I'm just kind of, I probably should stop. I don't know if you guys do this sometimes. You're like, you add this and you add that, but you should stop because you might like overwork your painting. <laughs> just, okay. All right, I think I'm done. <clears throat> Sarah Reed says, landscape looking good. Thank you, Sarah. Okay, so let me give you a little close up here. Okay. Don't know if you can see, but yeah, you can see like the glitter in the paint. Maybe. It's hard to tell on camera. Anyways. Um, 
yeah, thank you guys for watching. Here's a little sneak peek at the chat. Hi, Grain. Thank you. Um, thanks. So, yeah, if you guys haven't already, feel free to give this video a thumbs up. If you haven't, if you liked it, um, I hope you did. I'm going to turn my camera around and say goodbye. Okay, thank you guys so much for another amazing live painting session with you. Uh, I'm reading some of your comments here. Joy says, it looks very nice. The shimmer adds something extra fun. Have a good weekend, everyone. You too, Joyce. Sheila says, have a wonderful day all. Sheila. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Don't forget to use the hashtag if you paint this and post it to Instagram. You use the new hashtag, Allison Lane Art Tutorial. Um, or you, you can also tag me too so I can see it. Um, I keep getting notifications. <laughs> okay. Um, and I will feature one of you guys in the next live tutorial. And today's feature um, was Liz, Liz Nichols. Um, so I will link her Instagram in the description of this video if you guys wanted to support her. Um, and yeah, thank you guys. Have a great weekend. Thank you, Lizette and Sarah Reed. Um, I'm gonna shout out all of you guys. We have Sarah Lucas, Liz, Sun, Moon, Joyce, uh, Grain, Sarah Reed, Sarah Lucas, I said Sarah Lucas twice, Sheila, Lisette, Fallon was here, Des was here, but she left, Susan, um, yeah, thank you guys so much, it was so fun, v Viviana was here, Laura, okay, okay, <laughs> I'll go now. Have a great weekend. I appreciate you. Um, and I'll see you in the next tutorial in one week. Bye.